a bearded being groom over here that's moderately hard to say and I'm shouting a bit, it's kind of loud in here, I apologize. Welcome back, welcome back to me, another video. So we are off to somewhere kind of special, it's not really anything special on the uh, outside, um, but deep down inside me, it is a very special moment. After, uh, I don't even know how long it is, like a year and a half? I'm back in a go-kart. Now it may be an indoor go-kart and it's winter and all that business, but this is a uh, driving school initiated race, uh, 240 lap enduro I think, four guys, so about 60 laps each. We are really looking forward to it. It's, uh, it's been a while, it's been a long time, it's uh, been a struggle, it's been difficult, and all those many, many uh, synonyms for hard. Hopefully we can keep the winning streak going. Fun fact, the winning streak for my family is actually three races in a row. And uh, although it's only three, it dates back to uh, 2018, uh, July. Chantel and I won in the uh, Ecotech Miata. And then uh, actually it's Chantel's birthday in Norgo Karting. Don't let the birthday go win. Hey Chantel. In fact, hit her out the way while you're at it. I didn't do that. Maybe I did. So my brother won um, actually a week or two ago. Um, I think it was a work doing, but um, yeah, he won as well. So the, the Broomhead family, last three races, we've won them. So I'm hoping to keep it going. I'm ready. Let's do this. Uh, this is just laziness. Yeah. Laziness. Anyway, see you in a bit. Hello and welcome to the view from my face. So um, I'm currently second in line to get into the cart out of us four and the yellow and the red flag there are a very poor choice for um, the pit lane being open, the pit window. So um, my uh, my teammate here I believe uh, starts to question the uh, <laughs> the professionalism of using two caution flags effectively uh, just to make sure that the pit is open. Um, but uh, that signal there was to say that I'm ready and that the pits is open and it's ready to go. Oh, there he is. Uh, yeah, it is a terrible flag, isn't it, Ryan? Anyway, so uh, Eric Gross is just about to uh, just about to come into the pits and hand off to me. Eric, um, I drove his Civic in a few Enduros um, a few years ago. So uh, we've seen him before and, uh, of course, I painted his helmet. So you'll see a close-up of that as he comes in. So every 20 laps or so, the pit window opens. And uh, it's just a you know hot pits in it situation, but this is the uh, he did the first stint. I'm doing the second stint, so it's pretty early on in the race. Here's Eric. Undo the seatbelt. A quick cut, um, getting rid of uh, a little bit of uh, bum action there. But uh, he got his foot stuck and uh, just delayed us a little bit. Got to put the belt on. He's given me a little bit of a rundown for what the cart's doing. Um, seeing as uh, none of us have driven the cart yet, he was the first one, so he's passing over to me so I have a little bit of information. And rejoining the track. So I'm not going to really talk about places and uh, where we are in the race and everything like that because um, it's kind of hard to know. I don't have a lap chart or anything like that, but I know where we finished and I know how uh, how intense this was. So uh, a lot of these people are actually um, quite experienced. They've been uh, racing for a long time in uh, different forms. Uh, some people do this all the time, uh, the indoor karting stuff, but with uh, Pinnacle, uh, the driving school that we're doing this with. Um, but um, yeah, so a lot of people have a lot of experience, a lot of fast people here. Uh, all the times were very, very close. So uh, these are my first few laps. I'm just now figuring out that uh, the Formula Cartways carts are pretty good. Um, they're not uh, they're not rickety and uh, you know confusing and terrible and they don't have ridiculous stagger or tow out or anything like that um, the tires look in good condition um, so I'm just getting a few uh, a few first laps and just uh, getting my uh, rhythm and learning the track and everything like that so a little bit of scrape on the inside uh, of the corner there but uh, basically um, I've started to get my rhythm, um, there's now two carts in front of me, you can see he's being held up by the other one. So uh, I'm using this opportunity to uh, bridge the gap and obviously uh, catch uh, my opponents here and see if I can pick these guys off. Um, just trying to keep it as smooth as possible and keep up as uh, a much 
um, corner speed as possible as well. Uh, I'm trying to find the fastest lines, what feels most comfortable. Sometimes more comfortable is faster. Um, so you've just got to sort of try different things. And I know it doesn't look like much. There's another corner hit there. It doesn't look like much, but it's a few inches here and there will make a, a difference in a corner sometimes. So it's really just uh, about precision and, and trying to find the exact perfect line and the exact perfect braking or, uh, or gas or anything like that. So catching this guy a little bit. So the guy I was uh, hunting down, I believe, got past him, but uh, you can see he's a little bit wide, so he doesn't keep the speed up through the corners here. So, uh, you know, he's he's learning, he's uh, getting seat time, which is very important, but uh, of course, um, I've had a lot of seat time, so we're catching up just by being consistent, because that's what, uh, sometimes racing is about being consistent. We just got a little squirrely on the back, I didn't want to hit him, so, uh, you know. And then just gonna throw it down the inside here, a little bit of a squeeze, but uh, should be good. Uh, I've left some room on the inside for him, but I got a good grippy patch and I'm through. I gave him a little thumbs up there for a nice uh, happy clean pass and clean racing. He didn't hit me, I didn't hit him. That's how you do it, and uh, that's a little bit of foreshadowing for you. Nice drift there. Don't know if that's the fast way, but the drift was definitely fun. So at this stage, I'm still, um, I'm still driving a traditional line. Um, so wide and then turning in, and I'm gassing and braking, like you just default sort of get into a go-kart and, and just drive. Um, so I'm trying to keep it tight on the left there and then uh, cut the hairpin pretty close to see if I can get early on the gas to keep the speed up down this straight and down this fast bit. This turn is actually flat out. Um, you don't slow down whatsoever and just try to keep it smooth. You notice the opposite lock in the steering wheel most of the time. You present the cart to turning and then uh, typically you have a bit of opposite lock. Just keeping the speed up there. If you run all the way to the wall, there's a huge rubber patch um, from the use of the uh, track, obviously. So um, you get this uh, little bit of grip and um, speed boost, effectively, if you go and touch it. You can see it here. Um, I didn't go and touch it that time, actually, but you get the idea. There's one here, right there. Sometimes you get a little bit wrong and touch the wall there, but it's not too much of a big deal as long as you've still got the speed. And as you can see, I'm catching this guy as well, so just keeping up those consistent lap times. You don't always have to be the fastest, but as long as you can be consistent, those people going quicker than you are risking more. So if they make some mistakes, uh, you are ready to be there. Another touch on the inside wall there, just very, very minimal touch, but sometimes that's okay. A little bit of flex in these indoor go-karts on their uh, bumpers. So you can get away with it sometimes. You know, there's that patch, you hear the squealing, all that grip. A little bit of a slide from the cart in the front into the wall there. Um, not too much of a big hit, but slowed him down quite a bit. Now at this point what you're doing is you're effectively watching to see what they're doing as well as trying to keep your speed up and then you can figure out where you can really make your pass or make your move. So, obviously he's defending a little bit there, so he's gone wide. And I thought a bit of a late lunge would make a little bit of a mess of that. So uh, I held back and uh, set myself up for these two corners to get um, on his backside and, and make sure that I'm right there. A little bit of a mess up uh, from me on the left hand prior to the hairpin and dropped a little bit of space here. But this sort of distance is okay because you can sort of see what they're doing without getting right into them and, and worrying about them breaking hard or early. See the over-under, wide turning from me, cutting closer and being able to get on the gas earlier as it keeps me with him and it keeps him uh, thinking about me. But here comes the first change for me. Um, they changed the rules on us. They said we could pit wherever but then they told us to go all the way to the end so that's what uh, the confusion there was. So just uh, handing him the seat belt and making sure that he's uh, ready. He asked me if we're good, and I have to quick look up, so uh, he's depending on me. Um, that's uh, that's Kirk, our teammate right there. He uh, took the photos I have attached to this video, so thank you that for that, Kirk. So I've just turned the camera on for the second stint. Uh, this is actually Jason. Jason and I work together at uh, Buds, so I believe he does mainly uh, social media at Buds uh, BMW Minis. Uh, we met there. Um, and I knew he did this, but I sort of clued out, and I, uh, I noticed he was there um, when we uh, when we met up. So 
that was kind of cool to see him again. Um, and what we're doing right now is we're just talking about lines. Uh, he's uh, suggesting that uh, there's a faster line through here. He's one of the people that um, do this with uh, driving schools quite often. So he has a lot of indoor karting experience compared to a lot of us, um, which obviously every type and every genre is different. So it's good to have this sort of insight because uh, the track evolution and track grip on a, an outdoor track is much different than an indoor track, mainly because of the surface. So the concrete surfaces of these uh, warehouses over time shine up and they get less grippy. Um, so effectively the racing line become slipperier. So we're just talking about different lines here and uh, you'll see in the uh, in the session ahead that uh, I incorporate some of the uh, line changes compared to the last session. Here comes Eric, driver change number two. He goes all the way. So now I'm standing in front of him. Um, because his foot got caught last time, I was probably in his way. I'm just being told to move my foot. So he's getting out, he's able to get out. I'm gonna jump in, he's gonna hand me the seat belt, get the seat belt out of the way. There you go, there's the seat belt. I always had trouble plugging it in, because it's on the inside, and that's what he's telling me right there. Um, quick check over the shoulder to make sure I'm okay, and I'm off. So a little bit slower getting the seatbelt in, it was, it was so difficult to just plug that thing in, so... You know, losing a bit of time, but overall, um, you know, it's, it's a bit of fun, and it's uh, it's going well, and it's uh, my body's holding up, <laughs> which is kind of key, if you know about my previous, uh, you know racing over the last while with uh, medical conditions so this is actually the first race I've had since 2006 2005 maybe that I haven't had colitis during the race so I am this is the first race I've ever done without a medical condition um, since then so I'm, I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty fit now compared to what I was and it's uh, it's really nice to be able to just um, not be let down by my body and be able to do everything I need to. You see I'm driving down the middle of the track now um, and then staying on the inside. You, you can still go flat around the first corner so you're actually not losing a lot. Um, you know actually you're gaining it. You, you've got such a slingshot around so I'm, hugging, I'm going down the middle of the track because there's a little less uh, shine down the middle and you can just turn in and it grips and you actually end up catching people quite a bit there and then you can carry more speed through the rest of it as well. Um, and then the other one is um, I've changed that hairpin, how I'm doing the hairpin. Um, so there's a little more possibility of touching the outside wall but what you might notice is I straight line the left hander and go straight at the corner a little bit more rather than try to swing around because the grip level is building. So there's a lot of grip on the inside. It's a little bit less of a swing than previous. It's minute changes at this moment, but towards the end of uh, the third session, you'll see that uh, that changes a lot. So this session, um, this was noteworthy for the fact that this is where I lost my temper a little bit <laughs> on this one. So uh, I'm catching these guys, right? And uh, one of these is uh, a young girl that you saw uh, just earlier. She's, uh, she's pretty good, actually. She was fast. And she was very clean. Um, actually, I think it was... It might have been the other one, to be honest. I don't know. They all have helmets on, so it's hard to know which one's which. But um, basically, you know, this is what you get when you get uh, somebody even slightly slower. Um, it, it doesn't have to be a lot. It doesn't mean they're far off the pace. But if they're slightly slower, you just end up getting this backlog because it's hard to get past, right? So every time you hit or go for a move that doesn't work out, you slow down. And so the people are, the people, boop, 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 boop. you know what I'm trying to say. The people behind you then catch up and are able to then get a, you know, a better run at you. So he's, uh, he's gone wide there, so I've gone up the inside, take the opportunity. So here you go. This is the, um, this is the girl I was talking about. She's, uh, she's doing quite well. You know, this is me going flat out and I haven't caught her yet. So, um, yeah, we're free of the other people. Um, however, there is a cart behind me, and this is where the anger sets in, because I'm not sure when they arrive, you'll probably be able to tell. Um, as I'm just trying to sort of figure out, oh, she's touched the inside there. I went up the inside, but I didn't get a run, and she just squeezed me a little bit there, I backed out of it. Um, and I tried to go up the inside here as well, so I get past her. Ah, this is where it happens, yeah. So I get past her, and look what happens. I get hit. 
It wasn't her. Have you noticed the bumper that was in the shot on the left hand side? I'll show you again here. You see I get hit, I'm sliding out wide, and you see that bumper right there on the left? That's what I'm talking about. That guy right there. Now, his uh, entire strategy seemed to be hit you in every corner. If you notice, number nine in front, uh, you know, I'm, I'm on her tail, and basically I'd, I got hit there again. Every time you get hit, you sort of lose speed because the cart goes against the grain on the on the tires. So effectively what he's doing is he's slowing me down, slowing both of us down. Now, credit to the guy, he's quite fast, but hitting me in every corner is terrible driving. This guy's one of the worst drivers I've seen that thinks he knows what he's doing. Um, thing is, uh, look, he hit me again. You can see every time, every corner he just ends up hitting me and I you know now I'm waving at him just you know what are you doing um, one of the rules that we were told before is no bumping you'll be, be given penalties for that and they were very strict on that and now I'm being hit in every corner and I'm getting no help um, you know for this basically so I've now caught nine again he's uh, he's not hit me for a few corners and I go up the inside she's still there still clean racing and he hits me again because he can't read things and now he clips the back end it's incredibly infuriating to uh, to have somebody like this on your tail because you know <laughs> it doesn't make any sense so uh, okay so I'm letting him by I've got frustrated enough I'm letting him by just so I could do this there you go that's how you do it mate if you want to hit people out of the way that's how you do it like, Anybody, any idiot can just hit everybody out of the way. That's not how you, how to race. Especially, I mean, yeah, these things have bumpers, but it's not built for that. It's not supposed to be for that. It's supposed to be for, obviously, a margin for accidents and things like that. So you're not supposed to bump. I mean, yeah, there's rubbing is racing and that sort of thing and bump drafting. But in this, there's no reason for hitting you in a corner. I know if you notice down this front stretch, uh, there's a sign being held up. Uh, it's no bumping sign. It's a warning. And I'm thinking it's for me. Now I'm defending as much as I can. I'm very angry at this point. Because it's still happening. He, he's not cluing in to the fact that, oh, the person in front doesn't like it. And I'm still not messing up. He's probably a bit annoyed that I bumped him out of the way um, when I let him pass. But, you know, he, he doesn't deserve to be in front <laughs> that easily anyway. But here we go. I've got to run on her again. I'm up the inside like before. Don't see her still there. And guess what? He shoves her through again. Now she was ra she was clean. I mean, you're going to have a few touches, but she was a clean driver, so I had no problems with her whatsoever. Um, and plus, she's fighting hard, and that's kind of the point, isn't it? Um, but it's just this guy behind who's just hitting us all he can. Like that little squeeze there is fine. She doesn't know I'm there. Um, I got hit again there. I'm just like both hands off the wheel. We're like, what are you doing? He doesn't slow down when he sees something in front. He just hammers you. And so I'm saying I want to come in as soon as possible. And so as soon as the pit window opens, I'll jump in because I'm just losing way too much time. I'm getting frustrated. It's not benefiting me in any way. So I might as well, as soon as possible, hand off uh, to a teammate um, and then get away from this guy. So uh, that's effectively what I'm doing there. Um, they said he was ready. I gave a thumbs up just then to say that I'm coming in next time. I've seen. And uh, keep getting hit. Keep getting hit. And uh, should be an arm wave. I don't know if you can see that. There's an arm wave. I'm coming in. I'm going all the way to the end. And uh, and sorry, Ryan, but I uh, I didn't really help you get in here. I just uh, walked off all angry and straight to try and uh, talk to people. I'm like. This is actually just flicked onto the uh, third stink clip, but a few seconds later after that, um, one of the uh, lead instructors uh, said that uh, it was the sign was for the guy behind me, not for me. So that can't be put down at that point, but uh, this change over right here is um, after a large calm down. I'm good at this point. Eric's uh, put in another solid sedent. Actually, our entire team were pretty, uh, pretty good, solid and uh, equal in, in general. Uh, we worked well, actually. In uh, to try and get the most out of this thing. And we're all pretty close on times as well. So this is the final stint for me. Um, this is coming up to my... Uh, this is, I've already done 40 plus laps, so um, we're getting on to up to 60 here. 
Uh, the window, sorry, the window. The, the door is now open on the far side, and as you can see, um, what I'm doing is I'm doing this different line. Um, everything's warming up, the tires are hot, um, the track's rubbering in, so it's actually getting faster and faster. Something to note. I didn't know this at the time, but the guy in front of me is the guy that was hitting me the whole time. Um, if you looked at the uh, slow-mo replay, you notice the he's wearing the same stuff and he's the same number cut. So um, you can tell that, you know, like I say, he was quite fast. Because I'm actually pushing as hard as I can and I can't catch him. He's actually, I would say, slightly faster than me naturally. Um, especially in these carts. I don't know if that cart had any extra, but uh, he's actually a pretty quick driver. But it doesn't matter if you're quick. If you hit everybody constantly and you can't figure out how to not, then you're a terrible driver. And if you are at all watching, that's you. You're a terrible driver. Go and get some lessons. So really just trying to hunt the guy down and uh, see if I can, uh, you know, obviously keep consistent, keep my lap times up. And uh, effectively that's what I'm trying to do, right? Because if you're consistent, you can usually catch um, people in front and he's also being held up as well. So he's caught the back of somebody else. Uh, and uh, it'll be interesting actually to see if there are any hits that he does on this guy. Because um, I don't know whether he's kind of been... Um, yeah, because I can speak. I don't know whether he's been spoken to or not at this point about the rule. Yeah, there's a hit. Can't do the over-under very well. Like I say, he needs a bit of a lesson. And plus he shoves himself where he doesn't need to be. But I follow him through because he's made a gap. So I might as well. If I'd known it was him, I would have hit the hell out of him. <laughs> but... I didn't know it was him, so unfortunately I didn't get to have a bit of retaliation. Uh, well, I guess I already did early on in the race. So this stage, he's still doing a relatively clean racing line. Um, he's not defending me at the moment, and uh, which means he's still going fast. And so naturally I'm trying to do the same thing. So uh, we're still both trying to do racing lines and keep speed up, uh, even though we're close to each other. Normally if you have a bit of a speed di discrepancy at this uh, distance away, you will start to do different lines and try to overtake and they'll start to block and that sort of thing. But um, he's actually slightly faster, like I say, so um, he's actually getting away a little bit. And um, at some point um, I decide that it's kind of not worth um, trying to get faster and faster and faster because I'll keep messing up. Um, I do make a few mistakes that, um, they're not huge mistakes, but they just signal to me that you know pushing endlessly isn't actually benefiting me in any way. It's just getting me tired, it's getting, uh, using the tires up more, um, making it way too hot, uh, getting me more frustrated and... Uh, it's, it's really not worth um, doing a hundred percent effort every lap um, <laughs> when uh, when the guy's faster in front of you. You might as well just be consistent and uh, you know hope that he gets held up or something like that and get it another time. And get, uh, you know if he comes up behind traffic, then that'll be a perfect opportunity to jump in and try and make a move. But um, yeah, so this is me going uh, flat out, and he's just edging edging uh, away a little bit. Which is uh, fair enough, I guess. So at this stage previously, um, a little tap, wall tap there. At this stage previously, before surgery, I would have been... Well, firstly, I probably wouldn't have got there, but I, I would have been tired uh, really badly. My arms would start to be giving up, and I would um, I'd start to be really feeling it um, in the forearms, that sort of thing. You know, I was very unfit, I was very unwell. Um, but my brain still wanted to go karting and go racing and, and uh, try my best. So I kept going um, as long as I could with uh, doing physical things. But ultimately my body wasn't up to snuff. Whereas now, um, after four months or so of uh, getting better um, and uh, putting weight on and, you know, muscle and just being genuine, gen ah, generally, not genuinely, generally healthy and feeling good um, coming karting especially a not so bumpy track as well it was nice to sort of get used to it and, uh, and uh, you know get back into stuff and get my muscles uh, going again well I mean 
a little bit of eye racing. I mean, I've been eye racing pretty much uh, all those months, so uh, you know, quite often. So that's really helped, um, especially with the uh, the brain keeping the mind sharp and uh, just muscle memory a little bit. But um, yeah, this was nice to actually get into something with some force and uh, not a lot of force, but some force and just uh, and do something in person with uh, with real things. So this was uh, this was a lot of fun. like a ping pong ball bouncing off all the walls there but uh, yeah that was a little, little bit of a mistake for me but as you can see the guy in front of me has caught a back mark there so this is the time when I've now um, rather than just cruising around hitting my marks now I'm trying to pump in faster times um, obviously he's going around the outside trying to run there he hit that guy then as well because uh, he never learns anything but yeah he's uh, he's too aggressive like I mean he's he's gonna throw it down where he can, like he scraped the wall there, he's trying to be over under all the time, scraped the wall there and uh, he's, he's now, there's another hit and he hit the wall and I ended up hitting him because of the, the chain reaction. I think the first guy hit the wall, he hit him and then I hit him as well so I'm actually quite happy I hit him knowing that so <laughs> that's fine but um, yeah so now obviously I'm being held up a little bit, um, this guy in front of me is all over the shop so uh, you know, it's hard to know where he's going to go. And like I said, if, it w if I knew who he was, I'd be a bit more aggressive towards him. Um, pay a little bit of payback, because that's how he wants to race. So, um, But I, I don't know that. So uh, my typical thing is obviously be clean and, and try to just get past, um, you know, properly. So the guy in front, although not as fast, is uh, driving quite a uh, defensive race. I believe I just got the signal to come into the pits, but he's driving quite a, a defensive race um, and he's getting in the way. So he's actually doing a very good job of uh, blocking without being too ridiculous. Um, and obviously this guy is still just hitting him. You can see he rode him all the way into the corner there. And now I'm signaling to come in. Uh, this is the last time. Nice and slow and off to Ryan here. So he's holding the front, um, actually the back, sorry, um, and uh, jump again, um, give him the uh, seat belt and look out for anybody and good to go. So that was a quick changeover, that was uh, obviously a bit more experience than the changeovers we uh, we got in the end there. But um, yeah, be good to uh, get out there and um, and to do that with these guys, uh, a lot of fun people, obviously the one guy ruining it a little bit, but um, you know, the rest of them were all clean, a lot of fun. Really appreciate Pinnacle for doing that, and uh, I appreciate Eric for uh, for doing uh, what he did, um, helping me get out there as well. So, but yeah, that was such a fun time. Um, indoor karting is a fantastic way to uh, to be social and uh, enjoy uh, things with friends. But uh, um, I, I can't wait to uh, get on track and do it again and, uh, with these two guys as well. So uh, these two guys and Ryan will probably end up um, doing more racing together in the future. Probably with Eric specifically in the Civic again. But um, yeah, thanks for Pinnacle. Uh, thanks Eric. Thanks um, Kirk and uh, Ryan for um, being great teammates. And uh, it was a lot of fun. Great to be back and uh, I can't wait to do it again um, sometime, whether it's uh, indoor karting, regular karting or on the big track again. But lots more to come. I'm back. I'm building again. I'm doing all these things again. Uh, life is no longer on hold. So thanks for watching. Bit of a long video, but thanks for watching and see you again soon.